if you see anything that concerns you, here's a number to call. So people had an outlet if they had some question or concern that they could call. So so that was helpful. But yes, all even better than that is if they're if they're not visible. Say if they're on private property in your backyard, in someone else's backyard. If they are not if they're not visible to the public, that's ideal. Now and that brings up another point, like you talked about the beach. If an animal is missing in a public area, like a park, that can be tricky because you're going to have to work with the authorities there on what you are and are not allowed to do on their property. So that's mm-hmm. a whole other level of of complication. Yeah, and, and but I would think that. Next... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that that may be more for a dog than a cat because you may have taken your dog somewhere. But if you live near a, a park, like I have a friend whose husband is a park ranger, so they live in the park. Mm-hmm. So if an animal got out, they they would be on the park property. Yeah, I I think in cases like that where we are here, that um, animal services would probably be the only one that would be allowed to um, set the trap. I'm not 100% Mm -hmm. sure on that, but I would imagine that would be the case here. Um, Like I said, with Southern Kitty at the beach, I don't know who did the trap, but um, they never did get the cat. It was a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous cat and i imagine mm. it was probably found by somebody and kept unfortunately yeah because possibly I mean, yeah she did, yeah she had signs everywhere and the trap and there wow. was never never even a sighting so i just feel huh. like in that case somebody just kept the kitty and uh you know she just never got it yeah back. yeah that's kind of what i theorize when that happens of course i don't know but but it's just odd when an animal disappears and there's not one sighting you know, they just, they mm-hmm. just vanish. And a, a lot of people I've talked to who have found cats have said, well, it must have been abandoned because I never saw it before. I, ju- mm-hmm. I just saw it walking around and, and, and I took it home and nobody came looking for it. But like, how would they know? <laughs> right. Could be anybody, hundreds, thousands of people live in any neighborhood. How would they know right. who is looking for it? Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because that word is one of my pet peeves. I mean, I hate (laughs) seeing that on um, any post, you know, on social media because it immediately, you know, triggers the thought in somebody's head that this is not a love cat, that somebody's dumped it, you know, somebody's abandoned Mm -hmm. it. And so why make the effort to reunite it with them, especially if it looks scrappy and whatever. I just Mm -hmm. had a case where um, I assisted on a microchip lookup um they had somebody on the east coast uh working on a chip and they they struck out so they got a hold of me to help as part of the microchip Mm -hmm. help group with lost dogs of america and um you know i got the information right away and i reached out to the owner that the it had a perfectly working microchip and the kitty Mm -hmm. was not in good shape she it had been trapped through tnr it was a tnr Mm -hmm. person that did it and uh you know I got a hold of the owner and, um, you know, the cat had been missing for a year, but it had come wow. back, it had come back to the area and the person that trapped it was like, well, how do I know she didn't abandon it? I said, well, you feed the cats in the area all the time, right? She, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. have you seen it before? No. Well, then it probably wasn't, you know, if it just showed right. up, you know, yeah. maybe it somehow, maybe it somehow just found its way back. You know, you don't know. Yeah. You don't want to jump to that conclusion. And that is one thing that, right. how do you, what's your version of putting that out there? You know, because sometimes I get so frustrated <laughs> trying to explain yeah. to people that, don't say that, you know, how would you, what's your approach on that? Well, you know, it, it's a challenge with anything that's formed from an opinion that way that can't be proven one way or the other. And we're all guilty of confirmation bias. And unfortunately, in the animal loving community, a lot of people get ideas and everybody agrees with everybody else. And it becomes like an echo chamber that all these animals are abandoned and dumped and unwanted and we have to rescue them. And that's the rhetoric we've been preaching for decades. So what I try to do is I'm never going to tell somebody how to think because they're not going to listen anyway, but I, I try to pose it as questions. If I have the opportunity, I say, well, you know, where, where I, for a cat, for example, I would say, well, where did this cat come from? You know, I don't know what, what was, what were the circumstances? 
like, how would you know? I start asking questions. Mm -hmm. And if the answer to every question is, I don't know, then okay. And then you have all the scenarios like, well, I saw someone throw this dog out of a car. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know that wasn't uh, an animal hating neighbor? How do you know it wasn't like the person's crazy ex who is a, a violent person? How do you know that was the owner? Like it could literally be anybody. Mm -hmm. And so I start asking questions just to plant the seeds of doubt because people have to think for themselves. If they just agree with each other all the time and believe everything they read on the internet, they're not, they're not going to get anywhere in their understanding of things. And so we waste a lot of time rehoming animals when we could be getting them back home to their owners who are looking for them. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that you bring that up about, I saw somebody, we, we've heard that multiple times and I, I won't even mm -hmm. allow that. I won't not even allow those words to be posted because, you know, then it, everybody goes in that direction, you know, and you don't want them to yeah. go in that direction. You want them to go in the other direction, you know? Right. So, um, but it's, you know, people say that. And, and I didn't think about mm -hmm. the animal hating neighbor. I like that um, phrase mm -hmm. because I've used the X, you know, or kids playing a prank yeah. or something. And the ones that have said that, guess what? It did have an owner. And also sometimes mm -hmm. people pick up a, a pet with good intentions and then drive around a little bit and go, oh, geez, what am I going to do now? And then they might open yeah. the door and let it back out again. So you never ever know and to right. keep an open mind you know is is so important when you're trying to help reunite mm -hmm. a pet. yeah right. so is there anything else that you want to add before we have to say goodbye Bridget so I think another important point to make is what you do when your cat is in the trap because this is where a lot of people mess up when the cat is in the trap cover the trap take the trap home and open it in the house in a secure area. What so many people do is they, you know, they see their cat and they just want to pick them up so, or they want to open the trap and get them in the car or something. And you've gone through all this trouble to get your cat and now you're just going to let them out again because you know how cats freak out when they're in a situation they don't want to be in, like getting into a car. So the trap is a carrier. Just cover it with a towel or a sheet. And, and just take them home like that and open it in a secure area. That's, that's a really good point. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you like to take a little time here and, and just tell everyone how to look up your information online, um, both your Mission Reunite and um, your First Street Pets? Yes. So you can read all of this information on uh, missionreunite.org and First streetpets.org or .com, excuse me. And both websites have written material and videos. It's all free. Anybody can look at it. And there's also links to other books and articles that may be free or available for purchase if they want to learn more about these topics. Okay. So you have the web page and the Facebook page as well. Um, yes. The First Street Pets is on Facebook and missionreunite.org. Great. Yeah, because yeah. you do have some really good articles. I was browsing, uh, you know, through them, and um, uh -huh. there were several on there that I, I wanted to be able to share with some people, especially some of the cat people that, you know, they just get so sad and, and so broken down mm -hmm. that, you know, they just don't know what else to do. And I found some good uh, things on there that I want to start sharing with people oh, great. to give them some other, you know, to give them some other ideas and tips um because it really Great. is i mean it's a very very well done uh web page with um, amazing information on there i i like Thank that you, you have not only stuff to read but you've got the videos on there too mm -hmm. and um, yeah you're definitely you know somebody to to check out when you have a pet that is missing absolutely um Great. all right bridget <laughs> i'm glad you were able to come back on today because you know the yeah. cat trapping thing is important to people like i said that little mm -hmm. kitty that um you know was just so frightened to come out from under that shed and once that that trap yeah. There, there it was it, it just came right back out right. so um That's that great. was great yeah so it, it, if you have something that maybe you think is of utmost importance in in the pet you know reunification 
what would it be? And maybe we can come back again in the future and, and have another um, uh, interview. What would you like to talk about that you really think is important for people to know right now? Putting you on the spot. Well, I... <laughs> That's all right. Oh, God, there's so many things. I would say, of course, microchipping, but I think we already talked about that. Um, I think just uh, awareness, you know, identification, awareness, taking quick action, knowing the missing pet behavior, understanding how the shelter system works. So many people don't. Yeah. You know, they go to the wrong place or they don't start looking right away. There's just there's so much that people should understand you can't know everything, but at least have a basic idea of, of the prevention. And then if it does happen, then what you can do to resolve the situation quickly. Cause many people fail in finding a missing pet because they don't look or they wait too long or they do the wrong things or they waste money on things that aren't helpful and et cetera. So yeah. the more knowledge they have, the more likely they are that, that their pet won't get lost in the first place. Or if it does happen, they'll find them quickly. Right. Well, thanks so much for being with me again, Bridget. I always like sure. talking with you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Remember, everyone, that a lost pet can't tell anyone where it lives, so please be sure your pet is microchipped and wearing their ID tags. If it is chipped, be sure the chip is registered and up to date. Thanks for joining us today, and until next time, take care and keep your pets safe.